Hi, this is the Qt PDF presentation at the Virtual Tech Conference 2020. My name is Sean Rutledge. My experience with Qt goes back to 2004 when I was working at Motorola and developing an app for the E680 phone, which was an early Qtopia touchscreen phone. And then in 2011, I joined the Qt company. Since then, I've mostly been working on Qt Quick. I'm now one of the maintainers of Qt Quick. But over the years, I've worked on controls, dialogues. I've been trying to make um, the input devices work better. So trying to improve touch handling. I've worked on the platforms as well, getting Wacom tablets working better on X11, Mac OS. I've done just a little bit of Wayland work and um, various other things. So this presentation is on GitHub in case you want to be able to reproduce the examples that I'll be showing as part of it. You can use the QR code there. The history of PDF viewing in the open source world began with XPDF back in 95. That was a monolithic motif application which ran on various versions of Unix and Linux. And then in 10 years later, a library containing the rendering code was separated out. That's called Poplar. And it's a C library, but it also shipped with a Qt binding right from the beginning. So the open source world has been using that ever since for viewing PDF files. For example, Ocular on KDE uses that, and that works really well. Really, the, the only reason not to use it is the fact that it has a GPL license. But we found an alternative with PDFium, which is a third-party PDF rendering library that Google purchased the rights to include in Chromium. So when you're browsing the web, with your Chrome web browser and you encounter a PDF file and it renders inside the browser, that's PDF him rendering the pages for you. We're already building that along with Qt Web Engine. So in 2014, a bit after the release of Qt 5.4, Simon Hausmann had the idea of making a Qt wrapper around that. He had written a Python script to convert the JIP files to PRI so that we could build with QMake. And he wrote the QPDF document class and did some integration work. And then I wrote a widget example, which still ships with the PDF module. It's been extended by other people over the years. And then around the Qt 5.10 timeframe, management gave us permission to release this work. So we have had it available since then under the LGPL license. And you've been able to use it to build widget-based PDF viewers. Here's a blog post from 2017 where we made the announcement that that was available. And then what happened was that the upstream Chromium project switched from JIP to GN. So that gave us some trouble to be able to update our PDF -him version when they released bug fixes because we couldn't build it anymore. But the work had to be done anyway in the Qt Web Engine repository to switch to this GN build system, which results in the fact that we're using Ninja at the end to build the files instead of Make or and QMake is completely out of the picture. So since that work was already done, in order to move forward with the Qt PDF module, it made sense to actually just move it into the Web Engine module because PDF was being built there anyway, and we just have our wrapper classes on top of it. And actually, a commercial customer sponsored us to continue development of this module. So our goals basically aligned with what they wanted to do in their application, which is to be able to use the PDF viewer in Qt Quick and have the usual feature set that you find in most PDF viewers. So for example, you can select text, you can search for text, copy it to the clipboard, you can zoom in and out, and um, the license is okay for commercial users. It's PDFM has a, a BSD-ish license, and the Qt PDF module has an LGPL license, so you can use it for both commercial and open source applications. We're keeping it up to date because when Upstream releases new versions of Chromium, there can be bug fixes in the PDFM submodule as well. So those get taken along and, and you get all the latest bug fixes and security fixes. Qtbug 77503 tracks the features that this customer was asking for and the features that we've thought about adding to it. My goal for working on this project was that I wanted to use the opportunity to push the limits of what Qt Quick is able to do with the existing components. So what most people were telling me is, well, why don't you just create a subclass of Qt Quick item and call that a PDF viewer and just implement all the features inside the item. And the reason I didn't want to do that is because that would put it in a silo. I wanted to use the opportunity to make Qt Quick itself better. So I came up with the idea of just using PDF as another scalable image format alongside SVG. So we actually have a PDF image plugin now. Consequently, the simplest possible PDF viewer is like this. You declare an image, you give it a PDF file as a source, 
and you'd be done, except that I also want to be able to control which page you're on. Since Qt 5.14, there has been this current frame property, because we already had a current frame property and animated image, so I just moved that up into the image base class. So any image is able to deal with the multi-page formats, which by the way are not just PDF. There's also the ICO format for the Windows icons. You can have multiple icons inside one file. So if you use that as, an, as your image source, you can actually navigate between different icons now. The TIFF plugin doesn't yet support multiple frames, I don't think, but it could because TIFF is also a multi-page format. So to be able to move to the next page, normally you would use the standard key for that, which is page down usually, but I changed it to control D in my example because I'm using page down in the, to switch slides in my presentation. So I, if I hit control D, it'll go to the next page. The first page actually has a white background. That's just because that's the way the image was. And on the next page, we have some text with a font. On the next page, we have vector art. And you can see that on those pages, the background actually shows through because there's no uh, background as part of the page itself. So moving beyond that, we want to start adding features to our PDF viewer. And one thing I want to be able to do is get this um, metadata, the title, author, and so forth. So in order to do that, I have to declare a PDF document instance. And then that has properties for all of those metadata things. So I'm able to display the metadata. Next thing I wanted to add is text selection. So you can drag across the text to select ranges of it. How does that work? Well, I have this PDF selection object that's included in the module. I give it the document and the page that I'm currently on. And then I give it a from point where I'm starting to drag from and a to point where I'm dragging to. Those come from a drag handler. So I said I wanted to accept only the mouse because on a touch screen, I don't really want to do text selection that way. I'd rather have the Flickable be able to handle the touch drags so that you can move around the document easily. And target is set to null because I don't want the drag handler to drag the page by itself, but rather I just want to get properties out of there. So the from point is now the drag handler's centroid press position. So during the context of the gesture, when you start dragging, this initial point up here at the top left is going to be remembered. And then I'm dragging to the current position. And then when I'm done dragging, the drag handler active property changes to false. And at that point, I tell the PDF selection to just hold the selection that it's already got and not reset it simply because the points changed. I have a shortcut here to be able to copy the current selection text to the clipboard. And the other thing the selection provides is geometry. So I use that up here with cute quick shapes to be able to draw several rectangles at the same time. This is quite a nice synergy that happened. Paolo had um, wanted to be able to render arbitrary polygons on top of maps. And so he added this path multi-line to cute quick shapes in Qt 5.14 to be able to render series of polygons. So my geometry out of the PDF selection comes out as a Q vector of Q polygon F. That's the type of the property, and I simply give that to the paths of the path multi-line, and then I'm able to render several rectangles at the same time. Um, the next thing that I implemented in here is zoom. So with the standard shortcuts, which are usually control plus, control minus, I can zoom in, and the PDF document will be re-rendered, and then I can use the flickable to move around. I'm using the trackpad on my Mac for that. So how is zoom implemented? Well, I have the standard shortcuts, and then I have this function which changes the image source size because that will request the image to re-render at a higher resolution if we're zooming in and that also affects the implicit width of the image. In this example I'm not remembering a particular initial size but rather just taking the current implicit width and multiplying by a zoom factor which is a square root of 2. So the result is that if I zoom in twice I'll be doubling the size. That changes the source size, it gets re-rendered. And then the selection has to be informed that the render scale changed because it's taking care of the conversion from pixels to points and back again. Because when I drag with my drag handler, I'm going to give it pixels. But the PDF document always uses points as the unit internally. Our 100% zoom level is one pixel equals one point. But then when I zoom in, one point becomes more than one pixel. 
So I have to tell it the render scale so that it can convert the pixels to points, ask the document what text is in this range, and then it gets back geometry, and then it converts that back to pixels again to render the rectangles. But you probably don't want to write such low-level QML in order to create a PDF viewer. So we have included a couple of pre-built viewers that have most of the features that you would want. One of them is this multi-page view. The previous document, uh, the previous example was just showing one page at a time, but this one actually lets you flick through the pages, and it's using table view for that. Table view is quite good at delegate recycling. So we're only, if we're only showing one page like this, then that's the only delegate that's in memory at this time. And then when I go to the next page, then it has to render the next page as well. As soon as I cross the boundary to go from page two and part of page three, then page one is actually reused to become page three. Richard actually added some extra features for table view just to make this work better, because one of the things that we have is the ability to click links. And so it has to be able to instantly jump from one page to another and with very precise positioning. Some of these links will we'll jump to a very particular place on the page, and so it has to position the content Y just like that, even though that has to be calculated on the fly, what content Y should actually be. Um, notice that I'm using the back button then to go back to where I can, I can click as many um, of these links as I like, and then I can use the back button to go back where I came from. It remembers the navigation history. That's a built-in feature of the multi-page view, and We have tool buttons for the forward and back buttons, which simply call the back function on the view to go back or, or forward. And then to directly navigate pages, we use a spin box, and that just calls a go to page function on the view. And the history is remembered every time you do this go to page, that adds one to the stack, and then you can go back and forward from there. Another feature that's built in is text search. So I can type a string, and it will find all of the places in the document where that's found, and then you can navigate either with the list view or you can just use the arrow keys like you can in a browser. And that's shown in a splitter, so I can move that back and forth. When I clear that, it hides the splitter. So this is a split view. We have a list view to show the search results. The model is provided by the view because the view has to show the search highlights anyway, so it was just easier that way that you don't have to declare the model yourself. And then the delegate is an item delegate, and the text that I'm showing in there is a concatenation where we have the page number and then the some context string that was found before the string that we're searching for, and the search string itself, and which uh, I put bold tags around that, and then the string that comes after. And that's also integrated with the... Uh, I've jumped around a few search results, but... Um, each of those generated something in the navigation stack as well. So then I can go back to the previous places that I've been. So without writing too many lines of code, you're able to write a quite nice PDF viewer. Um, most of the space is actually just taken up by all of the toolbar stuff. We have the header toolbar and the footer toolbar. And of course, you probably want to be able to customize that in your own application. So that's why we haven't really packaged that part up into a component. I said that PDF is an arbitrary image format, so that includes border image. We're able to use a PDF file as the source for a border image. And um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's being re-rendered multiple times. It's just a nine patch, really. So it renders the PDF once to an image, and then it breaks it up into pieces with, uh, you know, happens to be 37 pixels that I need to cut off the edge to get an edge piece or a corner piece, and then it just Tiles those, uh, tiles those pieces to make an expandable frame. And um, if you needed to set the current frame, you could do that as well. So it's possible to have a PDF file with multiple images in it and then be able to choose which one you want and even use it with border image. That's kind of silly, but it works. So what do we have left to work on? Uh, bookmarks is one thing. That's what they're called, but really what it means is that there's usually this sidebar that has navigation links to jump to different parts of a document. 
This is the, the widget example. We've already got that working. So it's just a matter of exposing that to Qt Quick. That shouldn't be too hard. And then we can have the same sidebar. And now we also have a tree view in the marketplace. So it's actually possible to build a tree view again without using controls one. Another feature is arbitrary page numbers. So far, our page numbers are zero based, meaning that the first page is page zero. And then in the UI, I actually had to deal with that because when I call this go to page function, I have to give it a zero based index, but our spin box is going to show a range from one up to the document page count. So when I call go to page, I have to subtract one from the current value to get the zero based index. But it would be nice to actually just show the page numbers as they are in the document, because for example, there might be a preface at the beginning of the book with Roman numerals and then the actual content starts at page one. And then there might be an appendix, which is like starts at A1 or something like that. So actually the PDF specification allows you to have arbitrary strings as page numbers. And we need to be able to show those in the UI and show them in the spin box eventually. Um, thumbnails are quite easy. It's just a matter of making a list view with images as delegates. But it'd be nice to package that up as a component so that you have a nice way to navigate your document using a thumbnail list. We have a little optimization problem ahead of us because I had to declare a PDF document in order to access the metadata, and that's a long lived instance. But the image plugin also needs its own document instance in order to render pages. So rather than duplicating those, it'd be nice to be able to just share the document instance that you already instantiated and pass it down into the image plugin. And it's mostly just a matter of coming up with a nice way to do that internally. And then that will also help solve the password problem. In order to view an encrypted PDF, you need to provide a password. And so it's actually necessary to give the password to the document and then pass this document instance down into the image plugin so that it can do that rendering. Currently, the PDF pages are not being cached properly. That's just an internal detail of the QQuick PixMap cache that we need to improve our LRU algorithm to work also with large images, not just the small ones that are being uploaded to the texture atlas for the GPU. Tiled rendering, I'm not sure if we'll get around to that, but it's something that I was messing with late last year to try to come up with a way to view really large documents like CAD drawings. If you want to zoom into a particular part of the large document, you don't really need to render the entire page into one giant texture and upload that into the GPU because that is a bottleneck. So it would be nice to break that up somehow. So I did a prototype where I used table view for that purpose as well. And I just, uh, the individual delegates are images and then each image just renders part of the original source. So we have the plumbing in place to be able to specify a bounding rectangle and actually pass that down into the image plugin and have it just render part of the page and pass that back up. That works. But I'm just not sure whether table view is the right way to do it. It's nice to be able to reuse the mechanism that it has of um, managing the delegates as you scroll around. But on the other hand, each delegate is a complete image item and that has some overhead. So it might be nice to come up with a lower level mechanism, but we'll see when and how we get around to doing that. So that would be the end of the presentation, but I have one more thing to show you. And that is that this actually works on iOS as well. So I have both of the PDF viewer applications available. I can zoom to fit. And um, we made text selection work just like it does any other iOS application. You can actually use these handles to drag out a selection of text. And then you can copy to the clipboard. And then you can paste the text that you selected into some other application. That's the single page viewer for one page at a time. Then we also have the multi page viewer, which allows you to flick through the pages and uh, the same text selection feature works there as well. You can rotate the pages. You can zoom to fit. I guess it's zoom to fit the first page if I go on to the second. So that's the end. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you find any bugs, have any suggestions, or have any questions about this.